sound speeds. And if you're into microphones, then you've no doubt wondered which microphone is best for you. And there's a lot of things that go into picking out the right microphone, but there's one key factor that's often debated online. What makes a microphone pick up less reverb in a non-acoustically treated room? Engineers will tell you it's polar pattern alone, while people with experience recording in non-treated environments will tell you it's more to do with the type of microphone, dynamic or condenser. So which is it? Is it even possible to test? Welcome to this video. First, the issue I faced. Manufacturers don't really make dynamic and condenser microphones that are identical. Well, sure, they might release a series of condenser microphones that are very similar in features, like, for example, one of them might be just a bare-bones basic cardioid, while another one might have a couple of switches on that, and another microphone in the same series could have an adjustable pattern. But they're all in the same series, and that would make sense because they're at different price points and serve different purposes. But an identical dynamic and a condenser? This led me on a quest to try to find two matching microphones, but one that's a dynamic and one that's a condenser. It wasn't easy, but I think I found two that fit that description. This is the $160 Shure Beta 58A dynamic microphone. And this here is the $250 Shure Beta 87A condenser microphone. Now, both of these are handheld dynamic microphones designed to be used within six inches of the grill, even up to touching them. And because they're both sure, you know that they're both quality microphones and they're made from many of the same materials. Well, as many as you possibly can, being that one's a dynamic and one that's a condenser. They're sourced from many of the same parts, as many as possible. So how about these two? Both of these microphones are very similar in look, feel, weight, and design, but there are differences. For example, the dynamic feels a little bit heavier than the condenser and is shorter. Now, the dynamic has a rounded off grill, while the condenser has a flattened off grill. And if I were to guess, I'd say these are some of the visual indicators that would help you determine if it is a dynamic or condenser at a glance. You can also notice that right around this little part of the microphone, on the dynamic, it's completely smooth, while on the condenser, there's these little vents, but they're not actual vents that allow air in and out. They're just kind of decorative, I guess you could say. And as for the badge on the front, on the dynamic, it just has the manufacturer and the model number, while on the condenser, it has the manufacturer, model number, and the polar pattern. But what about under the grills? Underneath the grills, there is nothing common between these two microphones except for the fact that they look like the kind of microphone that they're supposed to portray, a dynamic and a condenser. Aside from that, there's really no similarities. Dynamic condenser. Condenser microphones have more specifications that apply to them than dynamics do. And if you'd like to know why, watch this video on calculating missing microphone specifications. Still, they are practically identical, even down to their 125 degree off axis null points in their super cardioid polar patterns. All things considered, I doubt you'll find two closer matching different kinds of microphones, and believe me, I did ask around. In an acoustically treated environment like this one, sound is not going to be reflecting off the walls. So this environment does not serve our purposes for the testing that we need to do. I'm now recording in the very worst possible room that I have access to, my shower. And in order for me to calibrate the gain so that they are identical on both of these two microphones, I'm going to put pink noise through this Bluetooth speaker, put them three inches away from the microphones, and then I'm going to play the pink noise while I calibrate the levels on both of these microphones to peak at negative 12 dB. Then I'm going to go into my DAW with the raw files, Reaper, and I'm going to further calibrate them so that way they are within one hundredth of a dB accurate. Now that we have matching levels for our program volume, let's do a noise floor comparison. And keep in mind, these numbers are negative. So the lower the negative value is, the lower the noise is. The Dynamic 58A has a lower self noise than the 87A condenser, and that's not very surprising if you look at the specifications, where the 87A self noise is 23.5 dBA. But let me tell you, Dynamics are unpowered. They're passive microphones that rely on the quality of the preamp to give it a self noise level, while condensers amplify the output. Therefore, it is responsible in many ways for the self noise coming out of this microphone. Now, between these two, I will tell you, it doesn't really matter what the self-noise is simply because our environment that we're going to be recording these tests in is going to have a higher noise floor than either one of these things. So that's really a moot point. 
Before we return to our test environment for some real tests, I'm not going to let you know which microphone is which in these testing. I'm going to label one of them microphone number one and one of these microphones microphone number two. You're not going to know which one it is. So I want you to use your ears and I want you to look at the numbers on the screen and see what the background noise level is for both of these microphones during the testing. In case you're curious, yes, I did find the point where the lows, mids, and highs are most balanced on this test speaker. And then I put that point between both of these microphones. And then I set my gain. And just to confirm my results, I flipped it upside down and then tested it again. And I found that again, the gain matched perfectly. So I can be assured that these are both matched level wise as well as can be expected. These microphones are now approximately six inches or so away from my mouth in this environment. Now to give you an idea of how this room is laid out, it's approximately six feet wide and about nine feet deep. Aside from the marble sink over there, the porcelain toilet right there, and the tile all throughout this entire bathroom, I'm standing in the shower and there's no acoustic treatment anywhere, like you would really do that in your shower anyway, or even in the bathroom. Now. The closest we come to that is a towel hanging up there and a towel hanging up there. Now, I'm speaking and you can hear how I reverb in this room because it's extremely echoey. And these microphones are calibrated to be exactly the same gain. And they are further matched in post to verify this. So if I'm speaking and you hear more reverb on microphone number one, put that in the comments or Microphone number two, you tell me which one you think sounds better on my voice in this environment. Another reason I chose the shower is because the extractor fan is directly above both of these microphones, just outside the shower. So if I go quiet, you should hear it identically on both microphones because it is quite literally directly above both of these and it should be approximately in the null area. In order to add additional background noise, just for extra added fun, I'm going to also turn on the bathtub. I should have turned on the hot water because that's extremely cold. I've now turned off the extractor fan and the water that you're hearing is more on the 58A side. So it's a little bit over here by maybe about three inches or so. And I'm going to go quiet now so you can hear how that sounds coming in on both of these microphones at approximately, what is that? Maybe about uh, 100 degrees off access to the capsules of the microphones. We're now listening to the water drain out of my bathtub. So now let's listen to that noise. Wasn't that exciting? Great content, Alan. Now for the reveal. Microphone number one was the Beta 87A condenser microphone and microphone two was the Beta 58A dynamic. That means the dynamic is winning so far because the reverb noise level was lower on the dynamic. Now, if the levels were more similar or even very close and not as much as 3 dB difference, I might assume that polar pattern comes into play a little bit more than it actually does. But as it stands right now, I'm saying no. Now let's check the 125 degree off access null point on both of these microphones. Now, because this is a video, Pink noise can sound quite loud, so I'm going to reduce the level that you're listening to while in our testing environment, it's going to be your standard level. So it's going to be a valid test, but you're just going to be hearing it at a lower level because I don't want to blow your ears out. Again, the dynamic did a better job at reducing off access sounds or sound rather that was just pink noise. But what if I put test tones through the speaker and then rotated the speaker around from the front to the back of the microphones? What would that do?
That was loud. In all tests, the dynamic microphone did a better job of attenuating sounds from the test speaker at a distance of 6 to 12 inches off the capsule. All tests except one, the 8K test tone where the condenser did a better job. And that honestly surprised me at this point, and I had to brainstorm this for a while, and I, if I were to take an educated guess, I would say it has something to do with the nature of both of these microphone types. A dynamic capsule is pressure operated, so the air pressure is affecting the capsule directly, while the condenser is a pressure gradient microphone. This means sound waves hitting the capsule create sound in one of two ways, depending on if it is an RF or a DC bias microphone. The diaphragm of a condenser microphone has less mass to it than a dynamics does, and a dynamic relies on direct sound wave pressure hitting the capsule in order to do most of the work and create a level. In contrast, the thinner diaphragm and backplate of the condenser creates changes in capacitance when sound waves interact with the diaphragm. The diaphragm moves very little in comparison to a dynamic capsule, and as I've discussed in other videos, the higher the audible frequency is, the more directional it is and travels farther with less power, so it moves the air more than it affects the condenser's capacitance. But again, that's just a hunch. Now, what conclusions can we draw from all this testing? Well, the farther away you are from the sweet spot on your microphone, the better job a dynamic is most likely going to do at reducing background reverb and noise levels than a condenser. Now, that's not to say that polar pattern plays no role in it, but all else equal, the dynamic takes the win unless you're recording extremely high-pitched sounds, in which case a condenser is probably going to do better. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Sound Speeds, and be sure to tune in the future for more interesting audio tests, education, and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below, or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.